Hello everyone. Let's provide a solution to this problem. Okay, and I want us to do this in two ways. Okay, let's look at the first method I will use. Okay, the first method. We have square root of x over x equal to 2, right? Now, the first step for this method is to cross multiply. So that square root of x will be equal to 2x. Okay? And then from here, the next method, I mean the next step, is to remove the square root by squaring both sides. So we have 2x, and then we square this. If you fail to put this in bracket, then your answer will not be correct because the square will be for x alone and not 2. Now this will cancel this. x will now be equal to 2 squared is 4 and then x squared will appear, right? x squared will appear. Okay, so that's from here. What do we do next? Remember that from here we have 4x squared minus x and this is going to be equal to what? This is going to be equal to 0 because we brought everything to the same side. Now x is a common factor. Bring it out. Here we have 4x then minus x divided by x is 1. This is equal to 0, right? Okay, so x is equal to 0 or 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. What I've done is this. Every time you multiply two things to have 0, it is either one of them is equal to 0 or both of them are equal to 0. So x here is equal to 0 or from this side 4x will be equal to 1. x remains 0 or here 4x is equal to 1 over 4. Okay, by the way, I should also divide this by 4, right? x here remains 0 or this cancels this and x here is equal to 1 over 4. Now, let me bring the two solutions together. x is equal to 0 or 1 over 4. Now, let's use the second method and we'll know which one is more effective. Now, the second method. Second method. Okay. The equation is root x over x equal to 2, right? Okay. Now, do you know that this is the same thing as x to the power of 1 over 2 divided by x to the power of 1? And this is equal to 2. Okay, this is what we have. And now, if I continue from here, this is the same thing as x to the power of 1 over 2. According to the law of indices, you pick one of the bases and then subtract the power. So, I'll take 1 away from this. This will be equal to 2, right? And now, this will give me x to the power of 1 over 2 minus 1 will give negative 1 over 2. And this will now be equal to 2. Okay, so the next thing is this. Let's remove this negative from here first. And that will give us 1 over x to the power of 1 over 2. Remember, the negative is gone. And this will be equal to 2, right? Okay, so the next step is to remove this negative, or to remove this um, power of 1 over 2 as we square both sides. 1 over 2, sorry, 1 over x to the power of 1 over 2, then multiply by 2. We are trying to square both sides, right? So this will be equal to 2 to the power of 2. This... Okay, this is x. This will not cancel, but this will cancel this. So that at the end of the day, here we have 1 over x. This will now be equal to here we have 4. The next thing is to cross multiply. So that 4x will give 1. And then our x is equal to 1 over 4. Now, observe something right away. Using the second method, we had only one value for x, which is 1 over 4, right? 
okay so we are having one over four but then using the second the first method we got two values for x let's go back there where we had zero and one over four but the question is which of these methods is more effective remember the let me do it here the original equation is square root of x over over x to be equal to 2. Now, most definitely, if you work with square root of, um, if you work with 1 over 4 as a value of x, I know you're going to be correct. Okay, okay, let's try that and see. In place of square root of x, I write square root of 1, 1 over 4, right? And we are dividing this by 1 over 4 again. Will this give us 2 at the end? Let's try. Square root of 1 over 4 is 1 over 2. And we are dividing this by 1 over 4. Now, turn this to multiplication. So we have 1 over 2 times 4 over 1. And this is the same thing as 4 over 2, which will give us, um, which will give us 2. So this is to say that um, our x to be equal to 1 over 4 satisfies the equation very correctly. Now, let's try to put in 0 now. Remember, we also have x to be equal to 0 from the first method. Now, if you put 0 here, there's no way you're going to have to. There's no way you're going to have to, right? Okay, so this is to say that um, x is equal to 0 does not satisfy the equation. Therefore, if you use the second method, you will be absolutely correct but if you use the first method you will have a false solution and a true solution thank you for watching